Hello everyone, and welcome back to... Wait a minute. This isn't a game. This is a kitchen. In all seriousness, welcome to my kitchen. Seeing as it's the end of the year video, I thought let's do something a bit different uh, for this one. And today, we're going to be making these. Shortbread cookies. A traditional way to welcome in the holiday in the UK. So, let's get started. To make shortbread, in a bowl add one third pound good butter, and to a mortar add half cup full sugar well refined and crush it until it be like dust. Then add to the butter. Add one half teaspoon salt and vanilla then mix well. Take one and a half cupful flour and add this to the butter, sugar, vanilla, and salt, and combine until it be like crumb. Turn out onto a surface and knead together until it combine. If it does not combine, add a little milk. Form into a brick and chill until it be hard enough to build with. Then cut slices as thick as you like, stamp and bake in an oven until it be enough. Cool and serve it forth. For those of you who understood everything I just said, you are a scholar among fools. For those of you who don't speak old timey, what you'll need is 10 tablespoons of butter. I'm using unsalted butter here, but you can use salted butter. If you're going to use salted butter, cut back on the salt by, I'd say, about half. And maybe I actually might not even need to add salt in this recipe at all. If you like salty cookies, keep it the same amount. Half a cup of confectioner sugar. Not to be confused with powdered sugar. There is a difference. It's a very minor one. Confectioner sugar has cornstarch in it which is used when you're making icings. That's what gives it that thickening effect. I've used confectioner sugar and I've also used powdered sugar. There's no difference in this recipe. Use whichever one you have on hand, or if you want to, you can mix the two. It's not gonna matter. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and salt. And finally, a cup and a half of flour. Optionally, you can use one teaspoon of milk. Now I say optionally because if you're using cold butter, like I am, uh, the dough might not come together as well. Actually, it won't come together as well. It'll stay like sand or crumbs. But if you cream the butter for long enough, well, then it will warm up and you won't need to add milk at all. So do whatever you want. We're using cold butter here, so we will need liquid, but if you let the butter warm up to room temperature, you won't need the milk. Or, if you cream it for longer, it should warm up enough to not need any extra liquid. In a bowl, cream the butter until it's light and airy with the confectioner sugar. I wouldn't recommend using granulated sugar because of the reasons we've already addressed so you've been warned if you do still use it and it ends up crunchy now add the salt and vanilla then mix in the flour slowly until it's all added then dump the dough like sand onto the counter and knead it by hand until the dough comes together into one homogeneous dough. Wrap in cellophane or foil. If you don't have cellophane, of course, uh, you can or foil. You can always use a Tupperware container or a jar or whatever is most convenient for you. You just don't want it to be exposed to the open air in the refrigerator. Now, you're going to want to refrigerate this dough for 
about an hour. Or even longer if you want, actually. I just don't recommend freezing it. If you're going to freeze this dough, that means that you're going to want to definitely properly wrap it or put it in a container and you're going to use it sometime in the very far future. Maybe save it, I don't know, for Easter. Or whenever you just want a nice late night snack, that will be done in 15 minutes. But, after it's been refrigerated for that hour or however long you felt, what you're going to do is you're going to cut slices anywhere between a quarter inch to half inch thick. For me, I say about three eighths is perfect. I like a thicker cookie. It's again, all personal preference. But then you're going to dock the top. If you don't know what docking is, that's just a fancy term for poking holes in it so that any baking gases that come from this don't crack the top. Then you shall simply put it on a baking sheet and place it in a 300 degree oven and bake until they're as brown as you like your cookies, which can be anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes depending on the oven. Here's a fun fact, the reason these are short bread and not long bread is because of the amount of gluten chains in them. Okay, technically it's the fact that these have a crumbly texture and long bread doesn't, but they are related. To a baker who works in yeasted and leavened pastry, something shocking about this recipe is the amount of fat in it. The fat covers the flour so it can't easily create gluten chains and, hence, keeps the chains short. If there is less fat, the chains can lengthen and you can stretch the dough without breaking. Something else that helps to keep the chains short is the fact that there's not much liquid here. What liquid is actually in this recipe, if you didn't use the tablespoon of milk, and even if you did, that's not very much in and of itself. But saying you didn't use that tablespoon of milk, the only liquid is just the warming up of the butter, which isn't a liquid. Which means that the two compounds that are in the flour don't actually create gluten or they don't create very much gluten. Slight tangent, uh, this is actually where we also get the word shortening, since this would be a fat that would short a dough. When the cookies are baked, let them cool and put them in a cookie tin for long-term storage or a Ziploc bag, if you have one, or on a plate to serve immediately, and serve it forth. For anyone who doesn't know Max Miller of Tasting History, I took heavy inspiration for how I presented this today from him and his YouTube channel, which will be linked below. So that's it for this year, and thank you guys so much for yet another wonderful year. This the grand and more consistent return of the channel and so long to some mainstays here on the channel the world is reopening around us and hopefully the last time for a good while as well but from everyone here at cinnabar headquarters merry christmas and Happy New Year.